Hello, everybody. Dave Neal here, stand-up comic host of Bachelor Nation News, and we are here on a New Year's Eve with a couple inflammatory videos, which I don't mean to be the case, but it's just what's in the news cycle here. We just covered the mask police uh, accusing Michelle Young and a bunch of other contestants of not caring about the pandemic and deleted vote. You can go watch that video if you haven't already. I think what we try to do here is we try to throw water on the fire, not gasoline, and we'll do the same with this story. So this was a thread going on the uh, uh, Bachelor or subreddit here that Brian Abasolo donated to the Republican campaign. Now, this is the problem that you have when you have a two-party system. It's an us versus them uh, sort of battle going on out there. And of course, we've been hyper polarized since the previous president and other issues where it's like just gridlocked, no progress being made. We're just like infighting. One might even think other countries would want us to be so weakened by our own divide. You know what I mean? So anyway, and I come to you guys, I think most of you know me by now, but if you're new to my channel, how are you? As a very progressively minded person, uh, wanting uh, social services to protect our lower income people and all of us, uh, whether that's uh, healthcare for all uh, and other social services like free kindergarten. Hey, maybe, uh, maybe a livable amount of time that moms and dads could spend with their newborn child their infants after giving birth. How about that? How about, um, uh, you know, paternity leave and maternity leave? We have all, we have all the money in the world. We've, we've proven this from the pandemic. We can work from home. We can do all these things. We can write uh, blank checks to corporations to keep things afloat. We've got it all for defense spending. So that's where I stand, right? I think that we can live in a world where we can put a lot of our money to help all of us, not just uh, the, the ultra elite. And as a progressive, I'm okay criticizing the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. You know, those like Nancy Pelosi and all others that, you know, have insider trading going on in the stock market. We all know this to be the case, right? We all know this to be the case. Um, it's a flawed system. It's crooked. And it's not one side that's necessarily got all the answers because it's the Democratic Party right now <laughs> with, unfortunately, Joe Biden being able to cancel student loan debt and do all these other things that are just not getting done. It's the infighting with Joe Manchin. It's all these other issues. It's very layered. But one thing we can agree on is that at least half or around half, whether it's 48% or 51%, half the country is voting for one side while half the country is voting for another side. Not having another option really makes it um, uh, a zero-sum time, and, and it's just it's, it's not a pretty sight. So when we expose people like this for having donated to one side versus the other, I think the initial thought, at least on Reddit, is that there's there's a real winner here. Like, oh, you're donating to the wrong side. And unfortunately, and again, there are lessers of evils, but until one side's actually got the right answers, I don't see this being too much of a story. We'll get into all of it. We'll get into all of this. I'd love to hear your opinions. And I know a lot of people get triggered by conversations like this. On my Patreon, I was um, doing a Patreon live stream, my private membership community, and I, I was playing uh, President Biden, uh, giving an address about um, some new mandate or you know where we stand with the Omicron variant, something like that. And someone was like, oh my gosh, I can't handle this. I have to go. And I was like, geez, we can't even handle... You know, we get stressed out just watching the president speak. <laughs> it's like, what a world we live in. What we need is some way, and I don't have all the answers, to reach across the aisle and speak to each other like we are family members, like we all exist under the same, uh, you know, sun here, right? Like we all, uh, you know, it, w whatever. So I think I think our communication is off with the way we're dealing like with conversations like this, where we're quick to shame and expose people versus having conversations about why people vote a certain way, which a lot of times people vote a certain way just because their parents voted a certain way. And of course, Brian Abasolo's parents are from Colombia and people say, well, Latin Americans are supposed to vote for Democrat. But what we've shown in the last election is that's not the case at all, especially people that come from Latin American countries that were seen as either communist or socialist. And I know a lot of people can't even tell the difference between the two. We just start calling everyone a commie or a socialist or a Nazi or uh, this or that. It's just, it's just wild. It's just wild. So anyway, I'm going to get into this. I wanted to share with you guys um, a clip from my top earning videos of 2021. Uh, of course, this is a for the private membership only community on Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash Dave Neal. But here's a video that's not Bachelor related 
that actually made $969. And most videos don't make this. Most of my old videos make zero, zero. But for whatever reason, this video just started getting recommended this year and it stopped making money. It makes like 20 cents a day now. But for a couple months there, it was just making like 30 bucks a day and it really adds up. It's a video I made almost 10 years ago. Actually, I still didn't make any money when I was monetized. This video was dead in the water. Then something happened. It just started to make money. And now it's made almost $1,000. So if you want to hear more, I'm not going to play anymore. If you want to hear more about all of the behind the scenes, how the sausage is made, you can go check that out. Uh, so we're going to get into Brian. Of course, he is uh, listed as a chiropractor here. You know, I like to kind of make fun of chiropractors here. They're, they call themselves doctors. And, you know, some people think it's a quack. So I go to a chiropractor, but some people think chiropractors are kind of quack. But I'll play a quick clip of this. Uh, when I was in New York City um, a couple months ago, I was working on this new bit, which I haven't really figured out. I haven't really tweaked it uh, because I haven't been getting much stage time with the um, all the shutdowns that are happening again. But it's um, it's a, the bit's called "My Car Is an Anti-Vax." I'll just play this for you. Just this is this is in honor of Brian Abasola here. My uh, chiropractor's anti-vax, uh, like real anti-vax, but he's really good at his job, so I keep going. That's where I'm at. <laughs> the pandemic has made us really evaluate like our moral fiber. And my fiance is like, well, what if he gives it to you and you give it to someone who doesn't, you know, isn't vaccinated and they die? And I'm like, well, honey, I got to sleep at night. So I got to go to that chiropractor. And I can empathize with chiropractors because, like, why should they believe in medicine if medicine doesn't believe in them? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, where are they at, you know? So adjust my neck and let's go on with our day. That's where I'm at. I've been talking into one of these things for three years. I'm going to live or not. I don't know at this point. <laughs> I certainly don't know at this point. Brandon A says the crickets say it all. Okay, thanks so much. I appreciate that you post something creative and uh, you immediately get shut down. That's the internet, folks. So anyway, we're back at it. Here we are. Uh, let's just read the best comments here about Brian. And of course, we know Brian's married to Rachel Lindsay. And people go, well, Rachel Lindsay must be a Democrat. And this is where it becomes so toxic to assume that someone's one thing versus the other. It's also because of their skin, because you know the assumption being, well, she's she's um she's a Black American and and they predominantly vote Democrat. And it's like, well, that's, I mean, she's also from a judicial family in Texas. Like we're all more complicated than that is the point. Well, this is a pri Well, this is a surprise from him who he's, who he's married to. It's not a surprise from many of the Hispanic community in South Florida. Many wealth, wealthy South American families set up shop in Miami, Colombian, and Venezuelan in particular to get away from what they see in their point of view from socialist governments. Add in the conservative Cuban community and you get the bubble. That's the very Republican Floridian Latinos. So that's obviously what but way better said than anything I could say. Um, so I wrote, yeah, I love Rachel, but sometimes her takes on higher learning are pretty conservative. I think Van is typically the more progressive of the two and he helps bring her along on certain issues. I clock that from time to time. Not that this is everything, but Rachel is from a wealthy upper class back background with a family who is entrenched in the local legal and judicial establishment. I feel like that would make you a bit more conservative than your average Democrat or progressive. The problem with, uh, with, uh, I feel like the Democratic Party is that there's so many different uh, variants, a tough word to say. People have so many different viewpoints, right? So the progressives are considered a part of the Democratic Party by by necessity, because they have to vote with them, because their values closer align with them. But then Joe Manchin's a part of the Democratic Party, who we know people in the Republican Party, like Mitch McConnell, are trying to get him to become a Republican because he's voting for things that are basically trying to stop uh, money that is spent. And uh, and as we know, we just signed the the biggest check of all time for the def defense spending, uh, which it's like we want to you know really worry about defense. Maybe we should uh, invest money in our uh, crippling infrastructure. <laughs> in our own country. You know what I mean? I think we can all agree we can't fix other people's problems until we fix our own. We have the highest infant, uh, we have the highest mortality rate for uh, first world countries for um, black women. I mean, this is like third world stuff, folks. You know, like we have a crippling uh, med medical system, which we've seen during the pandemic. We have real issues that exist in our country. And yet we're just like not able, to, our hands are tied. We're not able to do anything. So it's like, how do we end? And you know, like, People look at the Democrats and say, well, we gave you we gave you all of the tools you needed to succeed and nothing happened. We didn't get a mandatory. We didn't raise the minimum wage. We didn't do all these different things that should have been done. Canceling student loan debt, things that are so easy and simple to just sign away. 
and yet we spent all of this money on on missiles and bombs and bullets. And what what has it gotten us? What has it gotten us with the opioid pandemic in the middle of uh, the country here? What has it gotten us with all the natural disasters that we're not exactly like prepared to deal with with our infrastructure? These are real issues to have. So I think we almost by dividing people into like, well, but you invest, you donated to this campaign or you donated to that campaign, we're 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 stepping away from the real conversation of investing in our country as we see it. And that might mean, like we said, uh, free childhood care so your the mom can go back to work and also be able to provide for her children. And we we know that we know that minimum wage isn't a livable wage. Meanwhile, in and out burger, I just saw a sign for this. There in, in this might not be across the board for all their locations, but in one location, their minimum wage is twenty dollars an hour, regardless of your age and this and that. In the money. Families can use this money. We can really use this money, especially in such a time of need. We're entering 2022, not with much momentum, you know, not with much momentum uh, with, uh, you know, unfor- the unfortunate uh, people that are just graduating with degrees. What the heck are they going to do? What are, you know what I mean? Like, uh, it's, a, it's a real problem here that I don't think we're quite addressing because we're too busy saying, well, this side voted for that side. And if you disagree with the other, with the other side... I think that's okay to disagree. I just think we're almost like a a brother and sister fighting where we're just pinching each other versus actually sitting down and trying to break bread and figure out our differences. And it happens with media and it happens with the upper class not really caring who wins the next election because nothing's really going to change. So I'm not like an anarchist saying we need to all tear it down, but I'm searching for other solutions and I think calling out people because they donated to one campaign versus the other isn't really doing much when we have a country where half the people, regardless of what side you're on, are on the other side. Who's going to bridge the gap? Who's going to bring us all together? It ain't me, folks. We'll have to see who it is. More content coming your way. If you want to live stream with us, New Year's Eve, we're going to do a New Year's Eve live stream, 10 p.m. East Coast time. So come hang out with us. Uh, drink some uh, some uh, of your favorite beverages. We'll pop some champagne and we'll see you later on. Bye, guys.